Exciting times here on More Talk. If you've been following us on our journey, you will see that there is about to be a huge vacuum, a huge void in this industry. Whether it is the baby boomers, the leaders of certain verticals exiting, and the Generation X being very small because of the crash and now the last nine quarters, and then you have Gen Z and the millennial leaders of the future coming in. The problem is they're scarce right now. So that could be you or somebody you know that you want to help and mentor to get into this industry for the right reasons. And so I think just everything's changing is what we're going and really harping on. And so on our show, we're trying to show you the larger macro view of the industry because everybody's built differently. And the change is about the customers and giving them a fair playing field. So it's not just the person to your left or your right. But everybody in every part of America deserves the best rate possible or the best program possible. Or maybe they don't want the best rate and program, but they want the best advice and they want it from somebody, you know, that is playing on that educated and fair playing field. So follow along and listen to how Mike and I are able to bring out in great leaders like Andy and Tammy little nuggets that you can use so that you can grow beyond the borders of say your company or your area and you can be the next large advocate for our industry for your state and nationally what i would say is that we're not raw often enough for fear to what andy stated of losing the good originator not patting them on the back um losing them to the competitor whatever the case may be we throw bodies when we're on the high and we lay off where on the low. Well, who wants to be part of that? Gen Z's, as you mentioned, Mike, are very limited right now. We've got to do something to bring the younger generation into our industry and let them know that it's something that's worth being in, that it is truly a career. And that goes back to the education piece that I was talking about earlier in the podcast. But again, there are bad players that kind of take that away, just like any industry. We just have to learn how to minimize those bad players and we need to make sure that everybody understands that this business can be stable. You just have to learn how to manage it in the bad times, just like in the good. A lot of what was discussed is just, you know, putting more accountability on the originator. We see a lot of issues where the originator is not only putting themselves at risk, but causing problems for the entire industry because they're not individually understanding their requirement on what they do and how they serve best the consumer in a compliant manner. They should be educated. They should be licensed. They should be, you know, at the forefront of doing what's best for the consumer. So the more engaged they are with self-education, not being influenced, self-education, the more they engaged they are, they'll be a better originator to the consumers they serve always. So it'll help them get more business by knowing more. We've got this interesting time where these terms of baker or broker are misused, abused. It really doesn't matter. Every one of us to Fannie, Freddie, Ginny, and the investors we're all third-party originators, so it doesn't matter what titles you use, but you have to act in a way that is best for the consumer and and your position in the primary mortgage market. And I think that's really the the stance to take on it. And then we certainly don't want you know anyone abusing the broker title or the independent title to go out to the public and claim to be shopping all these lenders for the consumer, yet you're steering or you've been trained to steer, you know, one or few lenders in special interests, which is the exact opposite of what your fiduciary duty is. Prior to coming back into the show today, I was a little bit late. Why? Because I was taking education, not to get take continuing education from my license, not continuing education just to make myself better, but education on underwriting, education on my trade, and education through the Mortgage Bankers Association. You don't need to be a C-suite leader to be a member of the Mortgage Bankers Association, nor do you need to be just uh, an operations person, but joining your trade organization, which is going to provide you with continuing education, not just for the purposes of renewing your license and also educating yourself so that you can be a better person, a better salesperson, a better professional for your trade is not only going to uplift you, not only going to make everyone around you better, but help the industry itself. Getting the education that you want is different from the education that you need. And I think that if you understand that these are things that we need to do to educate ourselves within our own trade, it's going to uplift our trade, give our trade a better name for ourselves, and also provide a better environment for everybody that's in the industry of mortgage lending.